China bans Taiwanese pineapples. In response, everyone is buying more pineapples. Welcome to China Uncensored, I'm Chris Chappell. Tensions are at an all-time high between China and Taiwan, especially after the Chinese Communist Party took over Hong Kong and showed the people of Taiwan what unification looks like. The Communist Party has been ramping up military pressure on Taiwan in recent months. And then, out of nowhere, China put a ban on the import of Taiwanese pineapples. The announcement came only a few days before the ban. Very short notice. Chinese authorities claim it's an emergency issue of biosecurity. This ban was put in place even though all 600 batches of pineapples exported to China over the previous four months had been approved. But China's spokesperson said customs of the mainland have, in various instances, found pests in pineapples imported from Taiwan which would have posed a serious threat to the mainland's agriculture and ecological security had they not been intercepted. The temporary ban is a scientific biosecurity measure and is in line with the mainland's laws, regulations, and standards. And no country has higher standards for food safety than China. The problem is mainland China makes up 90% of Taiwan's pineapple export market. It's worth around 50 million U.S. dollars a year. So the sudden ban was a huge blow to Taiwan's pineapple farmers. So how did Taiwanese people respond? By going bananas for pineapples. They bought up the entire year's worth of pineapple exports in just four days. People began posting photos online of huge pineapple buys. Cooking shows have started featuring creative pineapple dishes. Also bakeries, and noodle shops, and burger joints, and ooh, pineapple shrimp pad thai. And you know what they say, a pineapple a day keeps the doctor away. As long as you don't poke yourself in the eye. That's, um, never happened to me. This photo caption says, Today's work buddy, the Taiwanese pineapple. And unlike most of my friends, my pineapple buddy won't abandon me. Where was I? Oh right, support Taiwan, buy pineapples. I mean, who wouldn't want to buy pineapples? So pineapples have become all the rage in Taiwan. Overseas, too. Japan ordered 6,000 tons, and that wasn't enough. This is a Japanese supermarket. All the Taiwanese pineapples are sold out. I guess no one wants to buy Dole. Taiwan's representative in the U.S. is promoting Taiwan's pineapples, too. And the American Institute in Taiwan, which is the de facto U.S. Embassy there, shared a photo of director Brent Christensen with creative pineapple decor around the office. The caption says, Have you pineappled today? You know it's a hot trend when people start using it as a verb. Don't believe me? Just Google it. And the de facto Canadian embassy, the Canadian Trade Office in Taipei, separately shared a photo of themselves enjoying pineapple pizza. To which I have to say, pineapple on pizza? Not cool, Canada. Way to ruin it. Like you ruin everything. Anyway, the Chinese Communist Party's efforts to punish Taiwan backfired. People inside and outside Taiwan banded together, and now, Pineapples have become a symbol for standing up to the Chinese Communist Party. A sweet ending. This Taiwan pineapple buying spree is a bit like what happened last year with Australian wine. After the Australian government called for an independent investigation into the origin of the coronavirus, the Chinese regime blocked or put tariffs on a wide range of Australian imports to China. That included a 200% tariff on wine. Chinese state-run media called it not a punishment, but simply an anti-dumping measure. Also, the Australian government had better grow up or face more pain. Yeah, totally not political. In response, there was a global call to buy Australian wine. Politicians encouraged people to buy Aussie wine. And even the White House featured Australian wine at a holiday reception. 
Andreas Fulda, an international affairs expert and author of a book about democracy in China, said, The danger of this to China is other countries notice. You can't simultaneously say China is a peaceful country that never picks fights with people, and then simultaneously say, if Australia doesn't change its political system, legal system, foreign policy, education system, and everything else, we'll never normalize relations. I think this wolf warrior diplomacy is inherently self-defeating. And yes, he bought some Australian wine too. The Chinese Communist Party's attempts at coercion may work on people in China who are too terrified to respond, but outside China, people stand up and fight back. And the rest of the world gets to enjoy more delicious pineapple. Can the uh, Communist Party ban Taiwanese bubble tea next? I could really use some more bubble tea. And you can even put it on a pizza. Canada. And now it's time for me to answer a question from you, a viewer who supports China Uncensored on Patreon. John Schultz says, To my knowledge, all giant pandas and their future offspring are apparently property of the People's Republic of China. Should the U.S. and other powers appropriate the many pandas held in domicile as partial remuneration for the tsunami of intellectual and other property theft by the Chinese? Good question, John. You're right. Whenever a zoo anywhere in the world gets Chinese pandas, the deal is that the pandas still belong to the Chinese government. Zoos have to shell out up to $1 million a year to rent just one. And if any baby cubs are born, they pay an additional $400,000 baby tax. And those baby pandas belong to the Chinese government, so they have to be returned to China at some point. Now your suggestion is, the US and other countries could just hold on to the pandas as remuneration for intellectual property theft and other things the Chinese Communist Party owes. That's a great idea in principle, there's just one problem. If we did that, we'd have to keep the stupid pandas. Thanks for your question, John. Be like John and support China Uncensored on Patreon. Go to patreon.com slash China Uncensored to see how you can contribute a dollar or more per episode to help us keep this show going. Once again, I'm Chris Chappell. Thanks for watching China Uncensored.